Hi, I'm Councilman Michael Sargentson, and I want to encourage everyone to come out Tuesday, February 28th, 6 p.m. at Nethercutt School to the 8th Ward Emergency Manager Meeting. Here you will be able to ask questions, give your opinions, and be a part of the solution. Please show up Tuesday, February 28th at Nethercutt School. Be a part of the solution, Tuesday, February 28th at 6 p.m. And remember, Flint is a great place to make better. Only on public access. <laughs> you want to face around the other way. Well, actually, actually, man, uh, you've been misinformed about the blue badge because that is still in existence. And actually, uh, in March, we're going to have another blue badge citizen academy. So that is still in existence. So all the other things are, that have been eliminated, except for anything that's been in public safety. So all the things in public safety are still in place. And yes, we, we have been developing a plan, and we do have a plan, but it includes citizen participation. So therefore, the plan includes you also. What's the plan? Sure. Uh, that's. I mean, we've been here seven weeks, okay? Uh, so we are developing a plan, and again, I've asked the chief to take the lead on that, and that does involve partnership with citizens. Uh, one of the things the chief emphasized the other night, he didn't say it tonight, but this issue of public safety takes all of us. We know with 125 police officers and a population of 100,000, we don't have enough presence on the street. So it is the citizens that need to cooperate with law enforcement. We have to work together as a team if we're going to uh, really uh, steer this community toward a safer environment. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Millie Arbor, head of the Fifth Ward. We have a lot of issues, but I want to address something that uh, everybody that property and have lighted houses next door, across the street, on the block, to get our taxes reduced, but everybody has to make a trip down to the assessor's office, am I correct? I've never done this before. Uh, if you want to get your taxes up reduced, which should be, there are tons and tons and tons of houses that are next door, the next block, where you work, everywhere, and our property value has dropped tremendously. So my, my question is to the assessor's office, um, and I will be down there. Uh, I happen to be a human relations commissioner, city of Flint, quite a few years, and I'm a retired nurse. I do help in my neighborhood, my block. I'm very active with the fifth ward uh, block club, and we would definitely like to have some answers. And if we have to all go down there, it, it doesn't. It seems as though that we got to have something online process that instead of making all these trips day in and day out to take care of stuff. Uh, the bill pay online. I finally got that. I complained and now we have it. The only 
only one thing that they do not have. They need to have a calendar so you can generate a date to pay, like credit cards do. Uh, most of us have computers, so but, but my main concern is the property value, the taxes. Our, our homes are being de-evaluated, but we're still paying the same taxes. So I, I, I would like that address. What I can say to that is that one of the reasons we're in the situation we are is because our tax base has actually eroded and the property tax has been, property tax revenue has been going down in this community for 25 years. So uh, that is a big piece of how local government is funded. The other big piece is income tax. That's one of the bright spots right now. We've actually had an increase in jobs in the community and you know, not to the extent we need. I understand that. We still have too many unemployed people. But actually, income taxes have gone up. In terms of uh, uh, appealing your taxes, uh, again, uh, there is a process to do that. Yes, you do have to come to City Hall and uh, that happens uh, once a year. Jerry, I, don't, I know Bill's not here tonight. Bill's here? Yeah. Bill, I'm going to call on you. This is our uh, city assessor, and, and I think he can still be. Uh, Good evening. Good evening. Um, for those that have concerns regarding the valuation of the property, assessment notices will be going out the uh, third week of February. They'll advise you of the determination of the valuation of your property, both assessed and taxable. Property taxes are based upon your taxable value of your property. If you are in disagreement with that determination, the notice will advise you of the time, place, and the date that the Board of Review will be meeting public session to hear public appeal. The board will be in session on March 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. The evening meeting on the 13th will be from 3 o'clock to 9 p.m. to allow those that are working to not make the normal 10 to 4 meetings uh, the opportunity to be here before the board. Again, the burden of proof as far as the value of your property has review. Uh, we have nine members on our board review, uh, three panels of three, and they will entertain your concerns, your documentation, and your opinion to that. Okay. Besides, it's a reduction. I don't know. If, if you have a house that you're paying $1,500 taxes on next door, they're paying $500. Do I have to go online and get all those people and how much they're paying and bring it to you for proof? You've got to remember, since 1994, with the passage of Proposal A, property taxes are no longer based upon the value of the property and they're no longer uniformly assessed against individuals. Since 1994, with Proposition A, we have what's called a problem. Individuals who have owned their homes for an extended period of time will be paying less taxes than those who are newly purchased properties. Because once the property sells, the subsequent year, the property becomes uncapped and their taxable value becomes equal to their assessed. So you're not going to have equity among taxes. That's not an issue. The issue is, are you fairly assessed on the valuation of your property, which may result in a measurement of what taxes you do pay to compare to your taxable value. You can't compare your taxes to your neighbor unless you're tired in the same boat. Well, yeah. Prior to 1994, we had uniformity of taxation. Since, since the taxation in 1994, with, with the limitation of the limitation of taxable value by the rate of inflation, and then the pop ups, the uniformity of the house. Oh, okay. Thank you. And I, and I just want to um, reiterate that while, and I understand the follow-up questions on this particular, you know, question, and sometimes you can lose 
the women of the question and answer. So maybe we would need to ask the person standing in line if they could yield. You know, we need to, just so that we keep everybody happy in this process. Okay, so next person. Order, please. Into the mic. We have a neighborhood association and we're a very close knit um, group. Um, until about a year ago, we had a very nice neighborhood uh, that we felt very safe. That's all changed. And my, we're right now, we are, we're in despair uh, because we feel like the, the people that are, can do anything about it. Uh, I'm not saying that they don't care, but out of sight, out of mind, most of them do not live in Flint. Our chief of police does not live in Flint. I don't know if the mayor lives in Flint. I don't believe he does. Yes, I do. You do live in Flint. Okay, but our chief of police doesn't, most people don't live in Flint. You may care, but unless you're here and you're going through what we are going through, you can't compare. You're going home safe every night. We're afraid now to go to the store or to go out walking at night like we used to. You know, we're, you have the roads, the sidewalk, all that is a concern. But this, our safety comes first. We have to feel safe again. And these hoodlums, they're not even living in our neighborhoods. We don't know where they're coming from. They're coming from other areas. So we need some help, we need some ideas, and we need to feel like somebody is there in our corner. You can't say you care, but then you go on at night and you're going out to Grand Lake or whatever, and you're sleeping safe and you're feeling safe, your family is safe, while we're worried at night if somebody's going to kick our door in. So, you know. All right. Again, what I would say is your neighborhood association, as uh, Chief Lott puts this plan together, we want to work with groups like yours. We intend to do that. We cannot really turn the corner on public safety without citizen help. So I would just say, uh, as we move forward with our plans, we'll contact you. We'll include your neighborhood association, get you involved. And hopefully, we can make some movement in the right direction for you. Okay, 